These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a righteous man. He was blameless among his generation. Noah continually walked with God. Noah fathered three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now the earth was ruined before God, and the earth was filled with violence. God saw the earth, and behold, it was ruined because all flesh had corrupted their way upon the earth. Then God said to Noah, The end of all flesh is coming before me, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. Behold, I am about to bring ruin upon them along with the land. Make for yourself an ark of gopher wood. You shall make the ark with compartments and smear pitch on it, both inside and out. Now this is how you shall make it. The length of the ark, 300 cubits, its breadth, 50 cubits, and its height, 30 cubits. You shall make a roof for the ark, and you shall finish it to within a cubit from the top. You shall put the door of the ark in its side, and you shall make it with lower, second, and third stories. Now I am about to bring the flood, water upon the land to destroy all flesh in which is the spirit of life from under the sky. Everything that is on the land shall perish, but I will establish my covenant with you. So shall you come into the ark, you, your sons, your wife, and your sons' wives with you. Also of every living thing, of all flesh, you shall bring two of everything, male and female, into the ark to keep alive with you. Of the flying creatures according to their kind, of the livestock according to their kind, of all the crawling creatures of the ground according to their kind, two of everything will come to you to keep them alive. As for you, Take for yourself every kind of edible food and gather it to yourself. It will be food for you and for them. So Noah did according to all that God commanded him. He did so exactly. Chapter 7 Then Adonai said to Noah, Come you and all your household into the ark. For you only do I perceive as righteous before me in this generation. Of every clean animal you shall take with you seven of each kind, male and female. And of the animals which themselves are not clean, two, male and female. Also of the flying creatures of the sky, seven of every kind, male and female, to keep offspring alive on the face of the whole land. For in seven more days I am going to make it rain upon the land forty days and forty nights, and I will wipe out all existence that I made from the face of the ground. So Noah did all just as Adonai commanded him. Now Noah was six hundred years old when the flood came, water upon the land. So Noah, his sons, his wife, and his sons' wives entered into the ark because of the flood waters. Of the clean animals and unclean animals, the flying creatures, and everything that crawls on the ground, Two by two they came into Noah, into the ark, male and female, just as God commanded Noah. After the seven days, the floodwaters were upon the land. In the six hundredth year of Noah's life, in the second month, on the seventeenth day of the month, on this day, all the water sources of the great deep burst open, and the windows of the sky were opened. Then there was rain upon the land forty days and forty nights. On that same day Noah, along with Noah's sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, Noah's wife, and the three wives of Noah's sons with them, entered the ark, they and every animal according to its kind, and all the livestock according to its kind, and every crawling creature that crawls on the land according to its kind, and every flying creature according to its kind, every bird, every ring creature. So to Noah and into the ark they went by twos, all flesh in which was the spirit of life. Those that came, male and female of all flesh, just as God commanded him. Then Adonai shut him in. 
The flood was forty days upon the land, and the waters increased and lifted the ark so that it rose above the earth. The waters overpowered and became very mighty over the land, and the ark drifted on the surface of the water. The waters completely overpowered the earth, so that all the high mountains beneath the entire sky were covered. The water rose fifteen cubits higher, as the mountains were covered. All flesh perished. Those that crawl on the land, the flying creatures, livestock, wild animals, all creatures that swarm upon the land, and all humankind. Everything that had the breath of the spirit of life in its nostrils, everything on dry land, died. So he wiped out all existence that was upon the surface of the ground. Everything from people to livestock, to crawling creatures, to flying creatures of the sky, they were wiped out off the land. Only Noah and those with him in the ark survived. The waters overpowered the land for 150 days. Chapter 8 Then God remembered Noah, and all the wild animals, and all the livestock that were with him in the ark. So God caused a wind to pass over the land, and the water subsided. Also the sources of the deep and the windows of the skies were closed up, and the rain from the sky was held back. The waters kept receding gradually from upon the land, and the waters decreased by the end of 150 days. The ark came to rest in the seventh month, on the seventeenth day of the month, upon the mountains of Ararat. The waters went on decreasing until the tenth month, and the tenth month, on the first day of the month, the tops of the mountains appeared. It was at the end of forty days that Noah opened the window of the ark that he had made. Then he sent out a raven, and it kept going back and forth, until the waters were drying up from the land. Then he sent out a dove to see whether the waters had receded from the surface of the ground. But the dove did not find a resting place for the sole of her foot. She returned to him in the ark, because water covered the surface of the whole land. He stretched out his hand, and he took her, and brought her back to him in the ark. So he waited yet another seven days, and again he sent the dove out from the ark. The dove came to him at evening, and surprisingly, a freshly plucked olive leaf was in its mouth. So Noah knew that the waters had receded from the land. After he waited seven more days, he sent out the dove, but she did not return to him again. It was in his six hundred and first year, in the first month, on the first day of the month, that the waters had dried up from the land. Then Noah removed the cover of the ark, and he looked, and behold, the surface of the ground had dried up. By the second month, on the twenty-seventh day of the month, the land was dry. Then God spoke to Noah, saying, Come out of the ark, you and your wife, your sons and your sons' wives with you, every animal that is with you of all flesh, including the flying creatures, livestock, and every crawling creature that crawls on the land, bring out with you, and let them swarm in the land, and be fruitful and multiply upon the land. So Noah came out with his sons, his wife, and his sons' wives, every animal, Every crawling creature, every flying creature, everything that crawls upon the land, came out from the ark in their families. Then Noah built an altar to Adonai, and he took of every clean domestic animal, and of every clean flying creature, and he offered burnt offerings on the altar. When Adonai smelled the soothing aroma, Adonai said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground on account of man. Even though the inclination of the heart of humankind is evil from youth, nor will I ever again smite all living creatures as I have done. While all the days of the land remain, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night, will not cease. Chapter 9 God blessed Noah and his sons, and he said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the land. The fear and terror of you will be on every wild animal, and on every flying creature of the sky, 
with everything that crawls on the ground and with all the fish of the sea. Into your hand they are given. Every crawling thing that is alive will be food for you, as are the green plants. I have now given you everything. Only flesh with its life, that is, its blood, you must not eat. Surely your lifeblood will I avenge. From every animal and from every person I will avenge it. From every person's brother will I avenge that person's life. The one who sheds human blood, by human will his blood be shed. For in God's image he created humanity. But as for you, be fruitful and multiply, flourish in the land and multiply in it. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, saying, Now I, behold, I am about to establish my covenant with you, and with your seed after you, and with every living creature that is with you, including the flying creatures, the livestock, and every wild animal with you, of all that is coming out of the ark, every animal of the earth. I will conform, confirm my covenant with you. Never again will I, all flesh be cut off by the waters of the flood, and never again will there be a flood to ruin the land. Then God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I am making between me and you, and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. My rainbow do I place in the cloud, and it will be a sign of the covenant between me and the land. Whenever I bring clouds over the land and the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. Never again will the waters become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the rainbow is in the cloud, I will look at it to remember the perpetual covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the land. Then God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have confirmed between me and all flesh that is on the land. Noah's sons who came out from the ark were Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and Ham was the father of Canaan. These three were Noah's sons, and from these the whole earth dispersed. Then Noah, a man of the soil, was first to plant a vineyard. He drank some of the wine, got drunk, and was uncovered in his tent. Then Ham, Canaan's father, saw his father's private parts and told his two brothers outside. So Shem and Japheth took the cloak and laid it over both their shoulders and walked backwards, and with it covered their father's private parts. But their faces were turned away, so they did not see their father's private parts. And when Noah woke up from his wine, he learned what his youngest son had done to him. So he said, Cursed be Canaan. The lowest slave will he be to his brothers. He also said, Blessed be Adonai, God of Shem, and let Canaan be his servant. May God enlarge Japheth. May he dwell in the tents of Shem, and may Canaan be his slave. Now Noah lived 350 years after the flood. So all Noah's days were 950 years. Then he died. Chapter 10 And these are the genealogical records of Noah's sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Sons were born to them after the flood. Japheth's sons were Gomer, Magog, Madai, Yavin, Tubel, Meshach, and Tyrus. Gomer's sons were Ashkenaz, Riphath, and Togarmah. Yavin's sons were Eliasha, and Tershish, Kittites, and Dodonites. From these, the coastlands of the nation spread out in their lands, each one according to his language, according to their families, into their nations. Ham's sons were Cush, Mizraim, Put, and Canaan. Cush's sons were Seba, Hevila, Sabta, Rama, and Septka. And Rama's sons were Sheba and Dedan. Now Cush fathered Nimrod. He started to become mighty in the land. He was a mighty hunter before Adonai. 
This is why it is said, like Nimrod, a mighty hunter before Adonai. The beginning of his kingdom included Babel, Erech, Akkad, and Kalna in the land of Shinar. From that land he went out to Assyria and built Nineveh, Rekovitar, Kala, and Rizan. Between Nineveh and Kala, it is the great city. Mizraim fathered the Ludites, the Anamites, the Lehabites, and the Naphtuhites, the Parasites, the Kaluhites, from whom came the Philistines, and the Kaphrotites. Canaan fathered Sidon, his firstborn, Heth, the Jebusite, the Amorite, the Girgashite, the Hivite, the Archite, the Sinite, the Avadite, the Zemurite, and the Hamatite. And afterwards, the Canaanite families were scattered. Now the Canaanite border was from Zidon. As you go toward Gerar, as far as Gaza, as you go toward Sodom and Gomorrah, Adna, and Zeboim, as far as Lasha. These are Ham's sons, according to their families, according to their languages, and their lands, and their nations. Sons were also born to Shem, who was Japheth's older brother, and the father of all the sons of Eber. Shem's sons were Elam, Ashur, Arpachad, Lud, and Aram. Aram's sons were Uz, Hul, Gether, and Mash. Arkbashad fathered Shelah, and Shelah fathered Eber. Two sons were born to Eber. The name of the first was Peleg, because in his days the land was divided. And his brother's name was Yachtan. Yachtan fathered Elmadad, Shelapha, Hazarmava, Jera, Hadarim, Uzal, Dikla, Opal, Abimiel, Sheba, Oper, Hevila, and Yobo. All of these are Joktan's sons. Their dwelling place was from Misha until you come towards Sifar, the eastern hill country. These are Shem's sons, according to their families, according to their languages, in their lands, according to their nations. These are the families of the sons of Noah, according to their genealogies in their nations, and from these the nations were dispersed on the earth after the flood. Chapter 11 Now the entire earth had the same language, with the same vocabulary. When they traveled eastward, they found a valley plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. And they said to one another, Come, let's make bricks and bake them until they're hard. So they used bricks for stone and tar for mortar. Then they said, Come, let's build ourselves a city with a tower whose top reaches into heaven. Let's make a name for ourselves, or else we'll be scattered over the face of the whole land. Then Adonai came down to see the city and the tower that the sons of man had built. And Adonai said, Look, the people are one, and all of them have the same language. So this is what they have begun to do. Now nothing they plan to do will be impossible. Come, let's go down and confuse their language there, so that they will not understand each other's language. So Adonai scattered them from there over the face of the entire earth, and they stopped building the city. This is why it is named Babel, because Adonai confused the languages of the entire world there. And from there Adonai scattered them over the face of the entire world. These are the genealogical records of Shem. Shem was 100 years old when he fathered Arkphasad, two years after the flood. Shem lived 500 years after he fathered Arkphasad, and he fathered sons and daughters. Arkphasad lived 35 years when he fathered Shelah. Arkbashad lived 403 years after he fathered Shelah and fathered sons and daughters. Shelah lived 30 years and he fathered Eber. Shelah lived 403 years after he fathered Eber and fathered sons and daughters. Eber lived 34 years and he fathered Peleg. Eber lived 430 years after he fathered Peleg and he fathered sons and daughters. 
Peleg lived 30 years and he fathered Ru. Peleg lived 209 years after he fathered Ru, and he fathered sons and daughters. And Ru lived 32 years and he fathered Serug. Ru lived 207 years after he fathered Serug, and he fathered sons and daughters. Serug lived 30 years and he fathered Nahor. Serug lived 200 years after he fathered Nahor, and he fathered sons and daughters. Nahor lived 27 years and he fathered Terah. Nahor lived 119 years after he fathered Terah, and he fathered sons and daughters. Terah lived 70 years when he fathered Abram, Nahor, and Haran. These are Terah's genealogies. Terah fathered Abram, Nahor, and Haran. Haran fathered Lot. Haran died before Terah his father in the land of his birth in Ur of the Chaldeans. Abram and Nahor took wives for themselves. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai. The name of Nahor's wife was Milcah, the daughter of Haran, father of Milcah and Ithcah. Sarai was barren. She did not have a child. Terah took Abram, his son, and Lot, Haran's son, his grandson, and Sarai, his daughter-in-law, his son Abram's wife, and he took them out of Ur of the Chaldeans to go to the land of Canaan. But when they came to Haran, they settled there. And Terah's days were 205 years, and Terah died in Haran.